What's going on hikers? In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you seven mistakes that beginning hammockers make. And I've made many of these mistakes and I will continue to do so into the future. But hopefully we can use today's video to help you accomplish the mission on this channel, which here is to help you increase your quality of life while you're out on trail. So our first mistake on today's video is if you look around, we're filming actually across the street from my house and there's all kinds of trees, which would normally be a perfect place to set up a hammock, but you have to pick two trees that are properly spaced. Now that may or may not be easy to do. It depends on what size hammock that you have and how the trees are spaced. So you may have to look around a little bit. Personally, I am using a 12 foot hammock and this one that I'm gonna be using in the video is made by my buddy. Uh, he has a YouTube channel, All Things Outdoors. I'll actually link his Etsy shop below and you can check it out. But uh, with your hammock, depending on what size it is, your trees will have to be spaced differently. Now, personally, what I do is I extend out my trekking poles and then I hold them out to my sides. And the proper space for me would be about from the tip of one trekking pole to the tip of the other, somewhere around that space. If they're too far apart, then your suspension is gonna put a lot of load on your hammock. And if they're too close together, you're gonna to get a ton of dip in your hammock, which may or may not be comfortable for you. So you have to do a little bit of experimenting, but uh, let's set up my hammock and do some more mistakes. Mistake number two is not using your suspension correctly. And I'm gonna give you a couple examples of this. The suspension that I'm using, you don't have to buy it, buy whichever one works for you, but these are straps made by Dutchware. It's got a sewn-in Dutch clip, and it has beetle buckles here to attach my hammock. But first thing, you don't want your straps to be twisted. That could damage the straps. The second thing is you want the load to be around the tree, evenly distributed on the strap. And the way that's not gonna happen is for you to set up your hammock where all the load is gonna be here on the clip, or uh, maybe your strap doesn't have a sewn-in clip. Maybe it's just a strap like this, and your, uh, your strap's just feeding back through itself. Anyway, you wanna kinda of pull it to the side where the strap just runs right off the tree, and then that is gonna help distribute the load more evenly. Mistake number three. Now, what I'm doing right now is testing out the hammock to kinda of see how high it's gonna sit. And this is a pretty good level for me, but what you wanna avoid is hanging your hammock too high or too low. So what I would suggest is go ahead and set it up, then sit in it, and you want it to be kind of like a comfortable chair. So I may raise this a little bit because uh, sometimes overnight this hammock stretches a little bit and I don't want my under quilt, which we're gonna talk about here in just a minute, to be touching the ground and rubbing and rubbing a hole through it. Also, if that happens with your hammock, you could just fall through it in the middle of the night. So you definitely don't want that. Uh, other than that, feeling pretty good. Mistake number four. I've adjusted my hammock a little bit and I'm sitting a little bit higher, but I was looking around and I don't know if you can tell, but it's a very windy, like kind of spring day and it looks like it's gonna rain. So what I would suggest is always avoid mistake number four, which is forgetting your tarp at home. If I was caught out in this weather, I would consider walking back to the truck because I'm gonna be using an under quilt, which has down, and once that gets wet, it's not gonna keep me warm anyway. So if you forget your tarp at home, you better hope that it's gonna be a clear trip because otherwise, you might be getting wet. Mistake number five. A lot of people, when they start with a hammock, they bring their sleeping bag with them, and they think, this is gonna keep me nice and toasty warm tonight. I mean, it's only getting down to what, 65 degrees? I'll be good. Well, that could be, I don't know, depends on how you sleep. But a lot of times what happens is if you sleep in a sleeping bag, you're laying on top of the insulation and it compresses it, it's no longer keeping you warm. So to get around that, uh, what most hammock campers will do is either lay on top of a pad that you would use in a tent, or what I have here is an under quilt. Now an under quilt is kind of like a little sleeping bag that's hanging under you. This one that I'm using is a 40 degree rated under quilt made by UGQ. Uh, I'll link below if you want to check out their website and some of their stuff, but it basically just hangs below you and traps the warmth like a little down burrito. Now, the thing is, is it's like air condition in your hammock whenever you're laying there. And when the wind's blowing below you and sucking the heat out, 
you can get very cold. So that's exactly what we want to avoid. Uh, whenever I sit here, instantly my butt is warming up because I have this nice down, creating this pocket of air underneath me, trapping in that heat. So mistake number five, you want to avoid laying in your hammock, unless it's a really warm night, I guess. Avoid laying in there without any insulation under you because you get that air conditioning blowing under you at night, those winds, you might get a little bit cold and it might be quite uncomfortable. Mistake number six, uh, this also deals with your underquilt and staying a little bit warmer. If you'll follow me right here, as you can see, there is a gap between my underquilt and the hammock material. And what's gonna happen is that will create a draft. And you don't want that because then your warm air is gonna leak out, cold air is gonna seep in, it's gonna make you cold. So what a lot of companies will do is create or sew in a draft collar. And that's what I'm doing here. And what you should do is not forget to tuck that in. And then they have a little suspension here so I can tighten it up and seal up that draft collar. And that's gonna keep me nice and toasty warm and get rid of those drafts on both my foot end and the head end of my hammock. So I would suggest if there's something wonky going on with your hammock, like you got a draft or something's just not comfortable, make sure you get up and readjust that even if it is inconvenient. Mistake number seven. I could say a lot about this. I'll try to keep it short. I also want you all to comment some of the mistakes that I left out because there are a ton and I'm sure I can make more of these videos in the future. But this mistake is doing things the way that YouTubers say that you should do them. I would highly suggest you doing your own research, get out there, get some experience under your belt and do things the way that are most comfortable for you. Um, you don't have to use the same gear that anybody else is using, nothing that they're suggesting. Figure out what works for you and do it your way. If you've enjoyed today's video, make sure you give me one of these, subscribe to the channel, and kick the notification bell for the latest notifications. We'll see you in the next one. Mistake number three. So what I'm doing right now is kind of testing out the hammock to see how high or low that's gonna sit. And I think this is gonna be a little bit, whoa.